Welcome to World of Fusion 360. In this video, we'll talk about automated modeling. So automated modeling and generative design are like brothers. Generative design is a big brother and automated modeling is a small brother. Let's understand the big brother and we'll get to know what small brother can do. To create outcomes from generative design, you need to set up preserve regions, obstacles and design conditions. Design criteria in that you need to set up objectives, manufacturing setup and finally materials. Then only you'll get outcomes, correct? So to set all these, you need technical knowledge, manufacturing knowledge and material knowledge. So even though you set up all these things, there are certain cases where errors might arise and you need to re-verify the process, which is a tedious work. This is where automated modeling that is our small brother helps us. And here you have automate. So that is in design workspace inside solid. You have automate. So if I click on that, so a dialog box opened and uh, we have inputs and alternatives. Inside inputs, we have phases to connect. So this is where we give the phases to be connected. So automated modeling will use phases to connect the geometry. And, and similar to generative design, you have bodies to avoid. If you have any bodies to be avoided, you can select those here. And for operation, you can select new body or new component. So here in this case, this is our uh, seat bracket. For this video, I already did a generative design video. You can watch that video through the description. So here, this is a bracket uh, bolt connector and this is our uh, cylinder where our uh, seats uh, insert goes in and uh, with the help of a bolt uh, it will be uh, held to the body of the vehicle. So I'm going to select this face and this face. So two phases I have selected and I need to set up bodies to avoid. Okay. I'm going to cancel this one now. And uh, so generally bolt goes in, in this direction. So the bolt shank goes in this direction and bolt head will sit on this face. I would like to replicate that with the help of cylinders. So under create, I would like to click on cylinder. And the beauty of Fusion 360 is First, I need to select the cylinder space where I want the cylinder to be extruded. So if I come on top of it, it is picking the top face. And if I click on this face, it is, uh, even though it is below, beneath, it is picking it correctly. So I'm going to select this face. And if I hover my mouse, I have my center point for the cylinder. I'm going to click on that and then all the way to this circle. So I got my control. This is for my diameter of the cylinder and this is for the height of the cylinder. So I want the height to be 15 mm. So though the bolt head will be like uh, 5 or less than 5 mm, I want it to be a little extending to the top because I need to insert that bolt. Correct. So I need some clearance to insert it. So inside cylinder, the operation is new body instead of join. Then I'm going to say, okay. Now I got this, the bolt head will be like a little uh, extra than that of the shank, correct? We need to provide that. So to provide that, I'm going to use press pull. But before using press pull, I need to split this cylinder. Okay, let's hide this body. I'm going to press select this face and uh, press V on the keyboard so that I can hide the body. So now see, uh, we got this 
cylinder and we need split phase for the cylinder so that I can extend only the head head area so modify split phase I'm going to select this phase the cylindrical phase and the splitting tool be this make sure your split is correct and then click ok now the cylinder got split let's hide this body see we got the split correct now i would like to press pull this select this face on uh, select press pull the press pull uh, dab uh, length b 3.5 mm perfect so so when you insert that uh, bolt so this is the area that i need uh, for it to be given so that i can uh, clearly uh, without any obstruction i can insert the bolt inside the hole then i can by using the fastener i can tighten it now going back to our automated modeling i'm going to click on this automated modeling now i would like to select these spaces now we have the bodies to avoid if i click on that i would like to select this cylinder that i just created as soon as i select that it is turned to red because it is a obstacle and it is uh, trying to avoid it so we told our uh, automated modeling to avoid this body and join these two phases so operation is new body if you create a new component it will create a new component in the browser if it is a new body under bodies it will create a new body i'm going to click on generate shapes so for automated modeling it takes 1 to 15 minutes to create the shapes based on the study complexity or based on your model now the outcomes are uh, being generated so we call this inside the automated modeling we call alternatives so totally six will be generated when it comes to generative design it will be like uh, you can generate more than six but uh, see the process is very simple so we just uh, input two phases and obstacle we just hit on generate and we get these shapes okay but when it comes to generative design you need to give all the design conditions parameters and uh, constraints manufacturing criteria materials etc here are few clicks you got the shape so it uses a uh, cloud for uh, generating these results you have to be online but uh, you should not close your uh, fusion 360 when it comes to this automated modeling you have to always connect it to internet if there is no internet connection it will pass that is all for this video we'll explore the results in part 2 and also in the upcoming videos we are going to see the additional things about automated modeling thank you for watching